Hey there, everyone. Michael e. Bryan here from the Oraculous School of Astrology with yet another question and answer segment where practicing astrologers bring me their questions and I provide them answers based on my astrological practice. Hello, Michael. All right. I have two questions and I'll try to be quick. So, and they're kind of related. So one, how do you feel about um, sixth house synastry when it comes to romantic relationships? And also, how do you feel about do you find stelliums to be hard to navigate in synastry just because it's like so much concentrated, um, just, you know, I don't want to use the word energy because I know you don't like that, but because it's so much like <laughs> concentrated astrological placements in one area. Great question. Great question. And I listened to you try not to use the word energy, and I knew that the word energy was on the tip of your tongue, but I listened to you try not to use it, and I'm very grateful that you offered that attempt. Now, the question is, how do I feel about the sixth house from the perspective of synastry? The sixth house within our natal chart is a house of stress and sickness. When we find ourselves in our sixth house, we are overstressing ourselves out and probably also making ourselves sick in the process. When we find our partner in our sixth house, our partner is probably overstressing us out and making us sick in the process. Therefore, if I find my partner in my sixth house from the perspective of a synastry reading, that's already not a good omen for me in terms of how my partner is manifesting within my life. Because either my partner is singularly creating far too much stress in my life than is necessary, or I am just hardwired to hold myself in a state of deep stress and anxiety in relationship to my intimate romantic connections. So that's how I feel about having the partner in the sixth house. If I have me and my partner in my sixth house, then heaven help us all because I'm stressing out over me, but I'm also stressing out over the marriage and it's a very stressful thing to be in. And the two of us are like the blind leading the blind in this world of stress. Now, once again, everything we say has to be corroborated by 10 other things. I know that that number keeps on going up, but it's going up by reason. So earlier I said three things and I said five things. Now I'm saying 10 other things. Everything that we say has to be corroborated by at least 10 other things in the chart before we speak about it definitively. Because if we're good astrologers, we should be able to find 10 other things to corroborate anything that we're going to say at all about the one thing that we want to talk about. So... There's that. However, in general, when a person is having the ruler of the seventh house in their sixth house, it's a problem. It's a problem because it's the sixth house of stress for that person. But it's also a problem because it's the twelfth house of self-undoing for their partner. Because if the seventh house is the ascendant of my partner, then the sixth house of my chart is going to be the twelfth house for my partner. So if my partner is in my own sixth house, that means my partner is in their own twelfth house, which is saying that my partner is already in the doghouse in their own life. Very often when a person has their partner in their own sixth house, that can indicate that their partner has addictive tendencies, which quite often is manifesting as their partner having specific substance abuse problems or specific addictions to certain substances that could be drugs, that could be alcohol, that could be anything that's serving as a major source of affliction and potential shame and guilt within their partner's life. That's one of the things that it means when we have our partner in our own sixth house, because that is our twelfth house for our partner, which is oftentimes the place where we bury a lot of our own addictive tendencies. So the sixth house showing up as a strong factor within the synastry reading isn't really feeling like the best thing in the world, especially when that is the only thing that we have to interpret because the sixth house isn't a good house in general, regardless of what you've read in the book that was just published 20 years ago. For the last 2,000 years, the sixth house has not been a good house, and it's still not a good house because it's one of the number one houses that we investigate when we're looking for traces of acute or chronic illness within the life of a person. Period. Now, the next part of this question has to do with stelliums and whether or not stelliums are difficult to interpret from the perspective of a synastry reading. Few people who think they have stelliums actually have stelliums, and the reason for that is because a stellium is the gathering of three or more traditional planets in the same sign of the zodiac. 
The traditional planets are Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, and the Moon. So if you have Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and Sun all in Aquarius, then you're definitely having a genuine stellium. But most people think that because they have their Sun and their Neptune and their Uranus and their Mercury in Capricorn, then that means that they have a stellium. But you can't include Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto into any stellium structure because we don't own Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto in a personal way in the same way as we own the seven classical planets based on their ability to be rulers of specific houses within our charts. Now, be that as it may, whenever there is a stellium or wherever there is a concentration, concentration is another word that you could have used instead of energy, but whenever there is a concentration of an influence within a particular sign of the zodiac, because we have more than three classical planets within that specific sign of the zodiac, then the things that we associate with that sign most definitely do manifest more fully within the life of that person, but also the things that we associate with that house most definitely do manifest more fully within the life of that person. So we have ways of describing a person who is having a confluence of planets in Aquarius. And if you want to know how I describe Aquarius, you can pick up a copy of my book, which is Mastering Traditional Astrology, A Depth of Beginning in the Celestial Art, to find out all about how to talk about the signs of the zodiac, but hopefully also to read the chapter before that, in which I say all the reasons why we shouldn't really be centralizing the signs of the zodiac. It's a very good book, and those are two very good chapters. So we can definitely talk about that person from a psychological perspective as having more of that sign manifesting within their soul and psyche, but it's also going to come up very strongly in relationship to that house where that person is located. Now, what that has to do with in the context of a synastry reading it doesn't necessarily have any direct implication in the context of a synastry reading because truthfully, good synastry looks like interpreting my chart fully and interpreting my partner's chart fully and seeing how much places of similarity and how many places of contradiction exist within those two interpretations. That is how to practice good synastry. Sure, you could also cast the composite chart to see what these two people's chart look like when you bring those two charts together and make one chart out of them, but the best type of synastry because it's the best type of astrology in general will always be to fully assess one person's natal chart as well as what their destiny is in this lifetime as it relates to love and to fully assess the other person's natal chart and what their destiny is in this lifetime in relationship to love and then based on having a clear understanding of both charts to make your astrological judgment based on whether or not these two people complement each other within this lifetime. So whatever you would do with the stellium within your normal interpretation of that person's natal chart should be done independent of the fact that you're trying to do a synastry reading because what we need to do within any type of partner-based astrology is to just practice good astrology in general. And good astrology always is born out of the heart of us fully understanding the destiny of the charts in the front of us, which means we have to do a full natal workup of both those people's charts in order to understand how they're communicating with each other romantically within this lifetime. Thank you so much. You made everything make a lot more sense. You're very, very, very welcome. That's my superpower. If you're enjoying these Q&A segments and you'd like to work with either myself or an OSA certified astrologer, then by all means check out our website where you can book yourself a high quality astrological consultation today. Also, I answer many of these questions and more in my book, Mastering Traditional Astrology, A Depth of Beginning in the Celestial Art, which you can buy a copy of on Amazon.com.